know I'm a hurricane. Just open your mouth. And you, at your age, should be ashamed of yourself. You! Right on the In the golden age of television, The Honeymooners stands as a timeless classic, weaving laughter into the fabric of American culture. At the heart of its charm was Joyce Randolph, the brilliant Trixie Norton. Yet, hidden behind the laughter and camaraderie, Randolph safeguarded a mysterious secret, concealed from the watchful eyes of the public throughout the show's filming. But what exactly are these secrets, and why was she hiding them? Join us as we uncover why Joyce Randolph kept this hidden while filming The Honeymooners. Joyce Randolph's Early Life and Career Born amidst the vibrant streets of Detroit on October 21, 1924, Joyce Randolph, originally known by the surname Sorola, hailed from Finnish descent. And her journey into the world of acting unfolded during her teenage years. The vibrant city of Detroit served as the backdrop where her passion for the dramatic arts flourished, leading her to become a part of the Wayne University workshop. Following her graduation from high school, Joyce embarked on a career in retail, finding herself employed at the illustrious Saks Fifth Avenue store in Detroit. Her tryst with the theatrical world commenced with an audition for the workshop's production of Stage Door in Detroit, a pivotal moment that saw her clinching a role and embarking on a transformative journey with the company. This was merely the prelude to a subsequent tour, where she joined the cast of a revival of Abe's Irish Rose, a production that captivated audiences for a remarkable year. At the tender age of 18, during the throes of wartime in 1943, Joyce set her sights on the bustling metropolis of New York City, a bold move that marked the beginning of her pursuit of fortune in the entertainment industry. Her Broadway debut unfolded in 1945 with the comedy A Goose for the Gander, headlined by luminaries Gloria Swanson and Conrad Nagel at the Playhouse Theater. A return to Broadway materialized with Ladies' Night at a Turkish Bath in 1950, showcasing the versatility that would become a hallmark of her career. Venturing into the burgeoning world of television in 1946, Joyce found herself at General Electric's Experimental Laboratory in Schenectady, New York. Shedding her birth name for the more captivating Joyce Randolph, she graced the small screen in 1950 with appearances on notable programs like The Colgate Comedy Hour, Rocky King Detective, Buck Rogers, The Clock, I Cover Times Square, and Famous Jury Trials, how she became part of The Honeymooners. The captivating tale of The Honeymooners commenced as a series of brief sketches enchanting the airwaves of the Dumont Network's cavalcade of stars. As if fated by the stars, this embryonic concept later evolved into a regular feature on the illustrious Jackie Gleason show that found its home on CBS. In an unforeseen twist of destiny, Joyce Randolph, the unsuspecting star, found herself embarking on this extraordinary journey. Her initial foray into the spotlight came not through auditions and scripts, but rather as the face of breath mints in a commercial. Little did she anticipate that a call from the legendary Jackie Gleason himself would catapult her into the realm of serious acting. From a breath mint commercial to the iconic role of a sewer worker's wife, Randolph became an integral part of one of the most legendary TV shows in history. Despite meager compensation and her character dwelling in the shadows of the others, she embraced the opportunity with gratitude, recognizing the potential it held. Jackie Gleason's revelation struck like lightning, realizing that the comedic alchemy between himself, Carney, Meadows, and Randolph was an unparalleled treasure. With a stroke of brilliance, he transformed The Honeymooners into a half-hour sitcom that mesmerized audiences worldwide, gracing screens with 39 unforgettable episodes from 1955 to 1956. The vibrant energy of the Adelphi Theater in Manhattan pulsed with excitement as the show unfolded before a live audience. Surprisingly, the cast and crew chose spontaneity over extensive rehearsals, infusing an extra layer of charm and unpredictability into their stellar performances. In the realm of showbiz, Jackie Gleason held an aversion to rehearsals, favoring the spontaneity of impromptu performances. While he basked in the luxury of being the ultimate decision-maker, 
calling the shots without answering anyone. His counterparts, Art, Audrey, and Randolph, took a different approach. Every Saturday morning, they convened to meticulously dissect the script, fine-tuning their performances with dedication. Jackie, the unequivocal master of his domain, possessed a remarkable talent that defied expectations. Despite his imposing stature, his movements exuded the finesse of a feather when he graced the stage with comedic brilliance. In an adventurous escapade, Randolph, Art, and Audrey embraced the heartbeat of New York City, delving into a thrilling roller skating venture to hone their skills for an upcoming skate-centric skit. The vibrant city streets witnessed their dedication as they spun, twirled, and practiced with unbridled enthusiasm. Curiously, Jackie remained a mysterious enigma when it came to his preparation rituals, shrouding his practice routine in secrecy. Despite the concealed efforts, he emerged onto the stage with an ethereal glide, leaving the audience mesmerized and entranced by his seemingly effortless performance. The dance of laughter and grace unfolded, creating a spectacle that transcended the ordinary, etching the legacy of a comedic virtuoso in the annals of entertainment history. Fast-paced production. The mere tap of Jackie Gleason's polished shoe on the set of The Honeymooners heralded an atmosphere of unparalleled professionalism. It was an indelible memory etched in Randolph's mind, recounting how the Great One burst onto the scene with an unyielding energy that never wavered. Within the confines of the set, tension crackled like electricity. Newcomers, transient figures on the show for a mere week, grappled with the challenge of acclimating to the breakneck pace. The pressure was palpable, reaching its zenith when nerves betrayed one actor, leading to an unexpected bout of stage fright-induced nausea in the wings. The experience for Randolph was a turbulent roller coaster of emotions, oscillating between thrilling highs and daunting lows. In the symphony of scenes featuring the legendary Gleason, Randolph marveled at the astonishing prowess of her co-stars, Audrey Meadows and Art Carney, in keeping pace with the whirlwind that was Gleason. Although her role was often smaller in comparison, she relished the moments when it expanded, acknowledging the inherent challenges that came with the territory. Her admiration for Art Carney reached effusive heights, dubbing him a genius and describing him as nothing short of wonderful. Amid the filming of the inaugural episode, Randolph shared a poignant anecdote, shedding light on Gleason's unconventional approach of rehearsing only once. This rule, while challenging for the entire cast, especially resonated with Audrey, who, according to Randolph, expressed astonishment and tearful vulnerability during the first show. Yet amid the challenges, Randolph found solace in the brilliance of her co-star, Audrey. In a tale of ingenuity, she shared how Audrey ingeniously devised a rehearsal strategy that cleverly sidestepped Gleason's aversion to multiple rehearsals, ensuring compliance without his direct involvement. Marveling at Audrey's exceptional memory, Randolph noted her co-star's uncanny ability to commit every line in the script to heart, regardless of the character delivering them. Post the singular Saturday afternoon rehearsal with Jackie, the ensemble would ascend to Audrey's dressing room, embarking on a unique rehearsal ritual. In this intimate space, Audrey's manager assumed the role of Jackie, reciting his lines for the cast. According to Randolph, this unorthodox yet effective approach proved instrumental, allowing them to rehearse multiple times in this simulated setting. Audrey's inventive workaround not only navigated the intricacies of Gleason's preferences, but also fostered a sense of camaraderie among the cast as they collectively honed their craft in preparation for the moments that would captivate television audiences, her exit from the Honeymooners. In delving into the intricacies of the behind-the-scenes dynamics of The Honeymooners, Randolph painted a vivid portrait of Jackie Gleason, a figure she deemed uncommon. His demeanor, marked by unpredictable mood swings, set him apart as an individual not easily approachable. A casual conversation with Gleason was a rarity, creating an enigmatic aura around the legendary actor. In contrast, Randolph extolled the professionalism of Audrey Meadows, highlighting her unwavering commitment to the craft. Audrey's exceptional memory became a pillar of support, 
helping Gleason navigate forgotten lines and ensuring the seamless flow of the production. Art Carney, characterized by Randolph as a reserved individual with a history of alcohol-related challenges, revealed a contrasting facet. Despite his quiet demeanor, Carney's wonderful personality and remarkable talent shone through, adding depth to the camaraderie within the cast. Dispelling the common assumption of sitcom stars frolicking together off-camera, Randolph clarified that the cast of The Honeymooners didn't spend time together after filming. As the clock struck nine, signaling the end of filming, each member went their separate ways. The narrative took an unexpected turn when Gleason relocated to Florida, reviving The Honeymooners in TV movies and another show from 1966 to 1970. Surprisingly, Randolph was not included in this revival, sharing a revelation from Audrey years later. According to Audrey, Gleason had actively sought Randolph but failed to locate her. Randolph, however, dismissed this as implausible, asserting that Gleason opted for his longtime friend Jane Keene to play Trixie. Content in her life in New York, raising her son alongside her husband's work, Randolph harbored no regrets about the casting decision. Instead, she remains inexorably linked to the enduring legacy of The Honeymooners. Despite her extensive contributions to theater and early TV, she expressed genuine surprise at the perpetual recognition she receives as Trixie, a testament to the timeless allure and enduring popularity of the beloved show. Her approval of the Honey Zoomers. Amid the pandemic era, the emergence of the web series The Honey Zoomers drew favorable comments from Joyce Randolph, the last surviving member of the iconic The Honeymooners sitcom. Acknowledging the concept as excellent, Randolph extended her well wishes to the team behind the innovative endeavor. Crafted by playwright Charles Messina, The Honey Zoomers unfolded in 39 online episodes, mirroring the iconic classic 39 half-hour segments of its predecessor, The Honeymooners. Messina's brainchild materialized during the throes of the COVID lockdown, with actors participating remotely from the comfort of their homes, their scenes skillfully edited together. In an intimate conversation with the Daily News, Randolph disclosed her recent indulgence in a New Year's Eve Honeymooners Marathon, reveling in the timeless allure of reruns that continue to captivate fans across generations. While she harbors a soft spot for the Sleepwalker episode, where Art Carney's character grapples with sleep problems, choosing an absolute favorite proved challenging. With a touch of humor, Randolph quipped from her Upper West Side home, her abode for the past six decades, that any episode where she had more than four or five lines automatically secured a place in her favorites list. Reflecting on her time with The Honeymooners, Randolph shared insights into her dynamic with Jackie Gleason. Communication with the enigmatic star was minimal, and the thought of requesting more lines for her character, Trixie Norton, never crossed her mind. Gleason, a man of few words, eschewed extensive rehearsals, making any such requests impractical. Currently residing in her Upper West Side abode, Randolph revealed her penchant for homebound television watching, a routine she's likely to continue. Beyond her pioneering sitcom, she lauded the timeless appeal of I Love Lucy and Seinfeld as comedies that have aged gracefully. However, she candidly confessed that the enduring discussions about The Honeymooners caught her by surprise, underscoring the lasting impact of the beloved show that transcends the passage of time. The Honeymooners, Salary Disparities. During the zenith of the show's widespread acclaim, the talented Joyce Randolph found herself in the unique position of being the lowest paid star, earning a modest $500 per week. In stark contrast, luminaries like Mr. Gleason commanded multi-million dollar contracts, yet he shouldered the entire burden of production costs and garnered a humble $65,000 to $70,000 per episode. Mrs. Carney secured a weekly payment of $3,500 while Mrs. Meadows received $2,000. Despite her character's comparatively restrained development, Mrs. Randolph earned veneration from devoted fans who considered her the last living connection to the ingenious absurdity that defined the show's cult-like following. Fan clubs, arcane trivia contests, 
and a brisk trade in memorabilia were testaments to the enduring allure of this sitcom. A particular 1984 gathering on Long Island, organized by the Royal Association for the Longevity and Preservation of the Honeymooners, Ralph, offered enthusiasts the chance to acquire a size 52 bus driver's uniform or the highly sought-after Trixie apron. The cast, cognizant of their unique place in entertainment, harbored no illusions about etching their names in television history. For Mrs. Randolph, the honeymooners hardly constituted a full-time occupation. Remarkably, a lone rehearsal, conducted mere hours before going live, was the sole preparation for each episode. Reflecting on those days, Mrs. Randolph reminisced about the elusive Jackie Gleason, who only made his appearance at 11 a.m. on Saturday, mere hours before the show commenced. In a revealing insight into the art of comedy, Gleason asserted that the true essence of humor thrived on spontaneity, cautioning against the perils of excessive rehearsal. We can't use her, she is Trixie. In a captivating interview with the New York Times in January 2007, Joyce Randolph candidly disclosed that she didn't receive any residual compensation for the iconic 39 episodes of The Honeymooners. A turning point came when royalties started flowing her way following the unearthing of lost episodes from the Variety Hours, offering a belated recognition of her contribution. Having spent a commendable five years as an integral part of Gleason's on-air repertory company, Randolph made a life-altering decision to step back from the limelight. Opting for a full-time commitment to marriage and motherhood, she asserted, I didn't miss a thing by not working all the time. I didn't want a nanny raising my wonderful son. Even decades after she departed from the show, Randolph remained in the spotlight, inundated with admiration and receiving numerous letters each week. A familiar face at the downstairs bar at Sardi's, she would enjoy her preferred concoction, the white Cadillac, comprising duars and milk, engaging in lively conversations with patrons who recognized her from a portrait featuring the sitcom's four characters over the bar. The realization of the show's profound impact on television viewers only dawned on Randolph in the early 1980s. Recounting an amusing anecdote, she shared that it wasn't until her son attended Yale that he discovered people approaching him, asking, is your mom Trixie? This revelation left her son surprised indicating that he hadn't paid much attention to his mother's television fame before then. Despite the enduring fan base, Randolph faced challenges in her career post-Trixie. Directors hesitated to cast her, citing her widespread recognition as a beloved character. She reflected on these limitations, stating, For years after that role, directors would say, No, we can't use her. She's too well known as Trixie. Jackie Gleason was a philanthropist. Jim Bishop's enlightening portrayal in The Golden Ham, a candid biography of Jackie Gleason, unveils a facet of the legendary comedian that goes beyond the spotlight. Gleason emerges as a beacon of altruism, his heart radiating a warmth similar to the precious metal. Bishop's narrative unravels a fabric of benevolence, depicting Gleason's unwavering commitment to philanthropy. Gleason's generosity knew no bounds, as he consistently directed his financial support towards an eclectic range of causes. From uplifting the Boy Scouts and contributing to cerebral palsy campaigns to supporting churches, budding writers, and aspiring actors, he stood as a steadfast advocate for those in need. In a poignant moment etched in Bishop's memory, Gleason's compassionate spirit is vividly captured when he comes across a news article recounting the tragic demise of a janitor who had taken his own life. Undeterred by his fame and success, Gleason's heart was stirred by empathy. Even as his health waned, his wife endured, becoming the torchbearer of his legacy. Gleason's benevolence reached new heights when moved by the plight of the janitor. He took it upon himself to cover the expenses of the funeral. This heartwarming gesture echoes louder than the applause of any audience, showcasing a man whose compassion extended far beyond the stage. In the realm of humanity, Jackie Gleason's golden heart left an enduring legacy, proving that true greatness lies not just in talent, but in the profound impact one has on the lives of others. The Four Major Characters The groundbreaking nature of The Honeymooners lies in its pioneering portrayal of working-class married life on American television. Unlike its contemporaries, 
this show ventured beyond the glossy facade of idyllic households, delving into the unvarnished reality of the Cramdens, predominantly within the confines of their humble Brooklyn apartment. The heart of the show beats in the Cramden's kitchen, a neglected haven in a weathered Brooklyn apartment building. In stark contrast to the sanitized portrayals of family life, the series courageously explores the everyday struggles and triumphs of the working class, particularly through the lens of its four central characters. While occasional glimpses into the external world are granted through carefully selected exterior shots, the true essence of the show unfolds on stage, within the familiar backdrop of the Cramden's dwelling. This unique approach captivates audiences, immersing them in the genuine and relatable experiences of the characters, establishing the Honeymooners as a trailblazer in the realm of television storytelling. According to Joyce Randolph, they are Number 1. Ralph Cramden Jackie Gleason brought the iconic character of Ralph Cramden to life, portraying him as a bus driver for the fictional Gotham Bus Company in the bustling landscape of New York City. Despite the occupational title, Ralph is seldom seen navigating the city streets behind the wheel of a bus, a curious quirk that adds to the charm of his character. While the bus depot occasionally serves as a backdrop, Ralph's true arena is the captivating world within his humble abode. Ralph Cramden, driven by an insatiable desire for success, finds himself ensnared in a web of get-rich-quick schemes, each more audacious than the last. Frustration often morphs into explosive bursts of temper, manifested through bellowing insults and grandiose threats. Yet beneath this tough exterior lies a man with a tender heart, devoted to his wife Alice and his loyal confidant, Ed Norton. Beyond the confines of domestic life, Ralph discovers solace and camaraderie in his passion for bowling and pool. As a zealous member of the loyal order of raccoons, his enthusiasm occasionally outweighs his commitment, as evidenced by his recurring arrears and dues. While Ralph's mother remains a fleeting presence, his father, unveiled in a poignant episode titled Young Man with a Horn, bequeathed him a cherished cornet, kindling a sentimental attachment that defies practicality. Gleason's portrayal of Ralph Cramden extended beyond the screen, earning him an honorary membership in the actual New York City Bus Drivers Union, a testament to the character's indelible impact. Posthumously, a Brooklyn bus depot was christened in Gleason's honor. Notably, Ralph Cramden's larger-than-life persona inspired the creation of the animated Fred Flintstone. In 1999, the enduring legacy of Ralph Cramden was immortalized with an eight-foot-tall bronze statue of a joyous Jackie Gleason donning a bus driver's uniform. This monument, erected in front of Manhattan's Port Authority bus terminal, stands as a testament to the character's cultural resonance. TV Land, in collaboration with Gleason's estate and the Port Authority, funded this tribute, solidifying Ralph's lasting imprint on the landscape of television. In addition, Ralph Cramden secured the 13th spot on TV Guide's prestigious list of the 50 greatest TV characters in 1999, a testament to his enduring popularity and cultural significance. Number 2. Alice Cramden In the early days of The Honeymooners, the character of Alice, born Alice Gibson, took on the role of Ralph Cramden's wife. Pert Kelton expertly portrayed her in the initial nine skits, spanning from 1951 to January 1952. Following Kelton's tenure, Audrey Meadows assumed the role for all subsequent episodes. Alice, Ralph's spouse of 14 years, emerges as a resilient and sharp-tongued woman who skillfully navigates the storm of Ralph's tantrums and capricious demands. Despite enduring Ralph's bouts of frustration, Alice remains a composed and level-headed figure in the Cramden household. In stark contrast to Ralph's penchant for concocting grand schemes aimed at amassing wealth or preserving his pride, Alice remains a pragmatic voice of reason. She astutely perceives the flaws in Ralph's schemes, offering sagacious advice that is often ignored in the heat of the moment, only for her concerns to be validated by the episode's end. Alice, however, is not merely an observer. She actively manages the finances of the Cramden household. Ralph frequently finds himself in the position of beseeching her for funds, whether to settle his lodge dues or finance his latest eccentric endeavors. Alice, 
Having pursued secretarial studies before her marriage, briefly employs her skills in that capacity when Ralph faces a period of unemployment. The dynamic between Ralph and Alice is enriched by the presence of Alice's mother, a sharp-tongued matriarch who harbors a disdain for Ralph's perceived inadequacies as a provider. Although Alice's father is referenced intermittently, he remains unseen throughout the series. In a comedic twist, Alice's sister Agnes makes a memorable appearance in episode 22, Here Comes the Bride, where Ralph unwittingly jeopardizes her marriage by dispensing misguided advice to the groom. The episode, like many, resolves with a comedic twist, exemplifying the charm and humor that defined the honeymooners. Meanwhile, the living arrangements of the Cramdens also add a touch of reality to the sitcom's narrative. After tying the knot, Ralph and Alice spent six years residing with Alice's mother before finally securing their apartment, a relatable journey that resonated with viewers and further enriched the fabric of the show's storytelling. In a 1967 revival of The Honeymooners, Ralph playfully paints a vivid portrait of his wife Alice, portrayed by Sheila McRae from 1967 to 1970 and reprised in 1973 as one of 12 children. He cheekily quips about her father, humorously asserting that he had never toiled in the workforce. This whimsical revelation adds layers to the character dynamics, offering a glimpse into the offbeat charm that defines the Cramden household. Originally conceived as a sketch on the Dumont Network's Cavalcade of Stars, the character of Alice, portrayed by Pert Kelton in its initial run, underwent a transformative shift. When Jackie Gleason transitioned to the CBS network for The Jackie Gleason Show, Audrey Meadows assumed the role of Alice. This change was not driven by artistic choice, but by the unfortunate circumstances surrounding Pert Kelton's blacklisting. In a revelation by playwright Arthur Miller, a family friend, it was unveiled that Kelton's husband, Ralph, had participated in a May Day parade years prior, leading to her unjust blacklisting. Miller, reflecting on this revelation in his autobiography, Time Bends a Life, highlighted the absurdity of the situation, as Ralph had no leftist affiliations and had merely joined a group of actors in a protest. The legacy of Alice transcends the small screen, making an unexpected appearance in the 1998 American stoner comedy film, Half-Baked. The character's name becomes a playful reference in the lyrics of a song performed by the film's character, Sir Smoka a lot. This unexpected homage showcases the enduring cultural impact of The Honeymooners, where even a mention of Alice's name can elicit nostalgia and recognition among audiences. Number three, Edward Ed Norton, Edward Norton, a character skillfully portrayed by Art Carney, a municipal sewer worker hailing from the bustling streets of New York City, and more importantly, Ralph's dearest friend and upstairs neighbor. Ed's affable nature serves as a stark contrast to Ralph's often irritable demeanor, creating a dynamic friendship laced with good-natured banter and playful insults exchanged regularly. Affectionately nicknamed Norton by Ralph, and sometimes even by his wife Trixie, Ed unwittingly finds himself entangled in Ralph's grandiose schemes. Despite being somewhat carefree and possessing a rather dim-witted charm, Ed's character introduces a refreshing levity to the Cramden household. In the intricate dance of their camaraderie, Ed's good-natured disposition often clashes with Ralph's explosive temper. Ralph, in his fits of frustration, showers Ed with verbal abuse, occasionally going so far as to throw him out of the apartment when Ed's unwitting actions hit a nerve. Yet amidst the chaos, a nuanced portrayal of Ed unfolds. Surprisingly well-read, liked by many, worldly and remarkably even-tempered, Ed stands as the unsung hero of their escapades. Despite his unassuming manner, Ed consistently outshines Ralph in various aspects of life, allowing Ralph to take the lead in their often humorous misadventures. Both Ed and Ralph share a common bond as members of the fictional Raccoon Lodge, an affiliation that adds yet another layer to their friendship. Beyond their lodge activities, Ed's shared interests with Ralph extend to the realms of bowling and pool, where he not only finds enjoyment but also showcases his proficiency. An unexpected twist comes in the form of ping pong, where Ed's talents surpass even Ralph's skills. The multifaceted character of Ed Norton 
injects an undeniable charm into the honeymooners, offering a delightful counterbalance to the more brash and bombastic elements of the dynamic duo. Ed Norton, the amiable character portrayed by the talented Art Carney, held a rather unique position in the labyrinth of New York City's sewer department. He humorously dubbed himself a sub-supervisor in the subdivision of the Department of Subterranean Sanitation, succinctly summarizing his role as someone who keeps things moving along seamlessly beneath the city streets. This quirky job title only scratches the surface of Ed's charm, as he emerges as a vital counterpart to Ralph in their comedic escapades. Ed's backstory unveils layers of his character, showcasing his resilience and adaptability. A World War II veteran, he utilized his GI Bill funds to attend typing school, an investment that took an unexpected turn when he realized his aversion to office spaces and confined environments. This revelation guided him toward the open-air domain of the sewer department, where he could navigate his duties without the constraints that stifled his office aspirations. In the rare glimpses into the Norton apartment, a mirror image of the Cramden's dwelling unfolds, adorned with a touch of refined furnishings. Despite both Ralph and Ed earning a weekly salary of $62 equivalent to roughly $680 in 2022 dollars, Ed manages a slightly more lavish lifestyle. His secret lies in an unapologetic embrace of credit, confessing to an astonishing 19 charge accounts providing an amusing peek into his financial strategy. Beyond the small screen, Ed Norton's impact reverberates in the realms of animation, serving as the muse for Barney Rubble in The Flintstones and influencing the design, clothing, and mannerisms of Yogi Bear. Ed Norton's character transcends the confines of one television show, leaving an indelible mark on the world of animation. The accolades bestowed upon Ed Norton are a testament to his enduring popularity. In 1999, TV Guide bestowed the honor of second place on its list of the 50 greatest TV characters of all time upon him. Entertainment Weekly, recognizing the invaluable role of sidekicks, placed Norton at an impressive eighth position among the greatest sidekicks ever, highlighting the character's timeless appeal and endearing qualities. Number 4. Thelma Trixie Norton Trixie Norton brilliantly portrayed most notably by Joyce Randolph, served as the charming link between Ed and Alice in the colorful fabric of The Honeymooners. Despite not gracing every episode, Trixie added a delightful dimension to the ensemble, her character, though less developed, exuding a unique charisma. Trixie, Ed's wife and Alice's confidant, occasionally revealed surprising facets, elevating her from the realm of a typical housewife. In a memorable episode, the audience witnessed Trixie's unexpected prowess as a pool hustler, showcasing a hidden talent beneath her seemingly ordinary exterior. Not without her quirks, Trixie's assertive demeanor towards Ed painted a picture of a somewhat bossy yet endearing character. Meanwhile, in a fascinating footnote to the show's history, Elaine Stritch originated the role of Trixie in an early Honeymooners sketch. However, after just one episode, the character was reimagined, with Joyce Randolph taking on the role. This decision, reshaping Trixie into a more wholesome portrayal, added a layer of intrigue to the show's casting dynamics. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.